morning all. Hope you are well. It's a beautiful spring morning. It really is quite warm. And this morning I have with me my bent apple, which I've uh, reworked. I've done a short clip talking about it, which I'll add on at the end here. And in it this morning, I've got some, uh, what have I got in here? Blend 131, of course, from Solani. The whiskey topped tobacco. I just realized my zipper needs topping up. And I don't keep any fuel in the car. I'm always nervous about the interior of the car getting too hot and that somehow igniting. Although I do have spare lighters dotted around um, in the car, so I guess that's equally risky. I don't know if that stuff can spontaneously combust in the heat or if it needs some kind of catalyst, some kind of spark. What do you guys do? Do you keep uh, fuel in the car? Well, I guess you've got a whole tank of fuel in the back of the car, but I assume that's adequately protected. Back to smoking the Blend 131 on its own. Smoking the Scottish Autumn Flake was okay, but it was nothing special. Perhaps um, the Autumn Flake needed more time on its own to, uh, to age, to get the best out of that Virginia before I start using it with other blends. But it does have quite a, a, a flavor, although it's not a strong flavor, but it does have, I guess, a honey sweet kind of flavor, the Autumn Flake. I think it needs a more, don't, don't want to use the word bland, but it just needs something to, to pack it out, to fill it out, um, and to dilute it. Something which is going to be fairly neutral in flavor, but add some sweetness, maybe a little bit of low down sort of um, body to the flavor. That's what I thought of the uh, Amphora Virginia. Boswell pipe, uh, the one that I made the new stem for, and it got me to thinking about what a difference stems make to the overall aspect and balance of a pipe. That pipe originally came with a, a Boswell stem, a non 9 mil stem, which I bought in 2016 before I went over to using filters. Came with a like an amber acrylic amber style stem. Um, as per many Boswell pipes, it had quite a steep bend in, in the stem. Um, wasn't the most comfortable stem in the world. I seem to remember that the, the bit was a little bit bulky, but I enjoyed smoking that pipe, and um, and I was very fussy about what I smoked in the pipe. And it was generally Stonehaven or Rick Stark Flake. I then converted it to 9mm and I had somebody make me a new stem and that new stem was a very short stubby stem. Unfortunately the 9mm tenon broke off. So I was using one of my own tortoise shell stems which I make it to 9mm. And that seemed to be very well balanced. The short stubby one, the, it was a black, um, I think it was a black acrylic. actually gave it a really good balance. It didn't look as good, but it had a very good balance when you smoked it. Because it was closer to your face, it was a short stubby stem, and it kind of made the center of gravity nearer to your face. Therefore, it wasn't so bowl heavy, and uh, didn't have such a strain on your jaw. Generally speaking, the further away the bowl from your face, the more 
that weight, that hanging weight is gonna be a strain on your jaw. So I made um, a stem for it the other day from rod stock. It's like a, a mottled, sort of swirly gray stem. It's a shame I didn't bring the pipe with me. And uh, the way I shaped the stem, it kind of almost looks like a dancing ballerina type pipe as a result. Quite a thick uh, diameter stem, probably a 22 mil, something like that. And I didn't, um, make it thinner in any way and it really gives it although it's funny that because although it's the overall shape of it when you hold it upright is got that kind of dancing ballerina kind of shape but it's also got a very masculine aspect to it because of the thickness of the stem it looks really robust and it, but it completely changes the way the pipe looks compared to having a small stem on it and it's now much more of a sit at home in your armchair kind of pipe and not one that I would be walking around in the street with because it's so, the stem is so, uh, the stem is so bulky. Talked about pipes looking masculine. It's interesting, I think many people, when they uh, write about their pipes, they talk about their pipes in the feminine say she I'm gonna fill her up with a this tobacco or that tobacco I wonder why that is um, it, there's a number of reasons that I could think of I mean I haven't really given it much thought but um, I guess uh, people look at them affectionately as a partner and um, and therefore because they're something uh, uh, a focus of their affection. It's given a, a feminine gender. It's a receptacle, which I guess is feminine. And I suppose many shape, many pipes have got a very, some of them have got a very uh, sort of curvy, curvaceous, voluptuous kind of uh, look to them. And they've got quite a curvy kind of Especially when you've got a stem which is an S shape or something like that. So some people I suppose could associate some kind of femininity to it. But I've never really done that. I've never had that association with my pipes. I've always referred to them as object, as as objects, as it or my pipe. But I've never really said him or her uh, in relation to my pipe. It was always a little bit uh, remote uh, for me, that kind of uh, association. I suppose people are passionate for their pipes, so I guess that could also be a, a feminine association. Anyway, in terms of COVID-19, we hear that there's going to be some form of easing. Um, I think the Prime Minister is going to be announcing his intentions of how to bring us out of lockdown. Um, and I think he's going to be speaking about that on Sunday. But it doesn't sound like we're going to be coming out of it properly anytime soon. Um, I think the impression I'm getting is that by the fact that, uh, I don't know if it was Don, Dominic Raab or whoever it was that was talking about it, um, was saying that it'll be easier, it won't be as uncomfortable. I think what I'm taking from that is, is that they're going to be opening up outside spaces, possibly parks, things like that, possibly shopping malls, basically places which are wider open, which are open wider, people aren't as huddled together. I think those will, we'll find that some of those will be opening. Perhaps uh, more shops will be opening. Um, as long as people maintain social distancing within the shops, 
there'll be lots of uh, signs in shops along the floor, you know, arrows and measuring uh, um, sort of stickers showing how far you should be from the person next to you. I think that's what we'll be seeing. But I think we're quite a way off from saying goodbye to this virus. But I hope that, um, I sincerely hope, that those countries that are developing antibodies and vaccines have huge success and managed to do so very swiftly. I'm going to wish you all well. Happy hump day. Enjoy your smokes. And I'm just going to tag on to the end of this video a little clip of uh, the pipe that I redid that I'm smoking now. I did a little clip um, at home after I finished it this morning. Have a great day, everybody. Catch you on the next one. Morning all, just a quick one. I'll probably add this to morning drive if I do one. Um, so I was talking about in my video last night about one of the pipes that I'd revisited. Um, did the undercoat last night. And uh, so excuse the printer in the background. Um, so here's the pipe anyway. Don't know if you remember this pipe sat up there quite often. Um, it's a bent apple that I made, but I've completely refined the shape. And obviously beforehand it was virgin without any stain. And now it has a stain. It had some great, great uh, grain. And um, it's just going to be that much sort of more wieldly, if you like. It's a much more sculpted, much more sharper egg shape, apple shape than it was before. So there we are. Catch you later.